Hey guys, Poro here, and I've got a special announcement to make today. I'm hosting my first League of Legends tournament, the Freljord Fluff Tourney. With the turn of the new year, I figured it would be fun to try something a bit on the larger scale than I usually do, and a tournament sounded right. It's a free-to-enter 3v3 tournament that will feature a $100 prize to the team that wins it all. I've been around the League scene for a while now, and I've watched and participated in my fair share of League tournaments. Most of these tournaments are 1v1s, with a large bracket that can feature over 100 players. This is great and leads to a lot of community interaction, but there's a problem. Since there are so many players, and therefore so many games, not all of them can actually be covered on stream. You miss out on learning who the players are as well as the evolving metagame. As such, I wanted a way to be able to cast every single match. I fooled around with the idea of maybe doing three separate 1v1s at a time on Summoner's Rift using the three separate lanes, but that quickly ran into a number of issues, such as picking global champions like Karthus, Soraka, Jinx, and a myriad of others, as well as what to do about jungle camps and objectives. It would be easy enough to just ban a list of champions, but all it takes is one person to ruin it all for everyone else, so I discarded the format. However, the issues that would arise if I did three separate 1v1s ended up begging a few interesting questions. What if you could influence other lanes? What if jungle camps and objectives were up for grabs by laners? How would the game change if there was no jungler? And thus, the actual format of the tournament was born, the Summoner's Rift 3v3. The base rules are pretty simple. Three bands per team, any champion goes. No banned runes, items, or summoner spells. Want to redemption another lane? Go ahead. Want to pick Karthus? That works too. Want to proxy without the fear of a jungler stopping you? Sure. As far as absolute rules go, there are two. The first rule is that each team must have one champion in each lane prior to the two minute mark. This means no silly shenanigans like grouping up and sprinting down one lane, and no starting on jungle camps. This also means you can't just immediately run through river to swap lanes out of bad matchups. The other rule is the win condition, which is the first team to destroy any inhibitor wins. This keeps the games fairly fast paced, while still giving enough time for mid-game macro to win out. In testing, most games took between 20 to 25 minutes, with a few outliers here and there. With this in mind, the tournament, as of right now, is planned to be streamed and casted fully. Every match and every round. I don't expect this many teams to sign up, but I will cap the number of teams at 64 for the sake of time. The structure at the moment is that each match will run on a strict schedule, with the goal of playing roughly one match each hour. If a match finishes early and everyone in the next match is ready to go, we'll start earlier. The tournament will also take place over multiple days, and I have six days set aside right now. Those are January 10th, 11th, 12th, 17th, 18th, and 19th. These are all Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, the three days I think most people should be free. If necessary, I'm also ready to do the 13th through 16th, but I don't think that's likely. For those of you who haven't realized yet, this means teams will be expected to know exactly when their match day and general time slots are, and will be expected to be able to commit to those days prior to signing up. I don't expect this all to end up going perfectly smoothly, and I'll figure out any scheduling roadblocks as they come up. If you want to sign up, there will be links to the applications in the description of the video and in the pinned comment. There will also be a link to the expanded rules and format doc, and it's absolutely required that teams read this before signing up. There will also be a solo duo application for those who don't have a full team, but I want to make it absolutely clear that full teams will be considered first, and solo duos will only be accepted to fill out missing spots in the bracket, or to be used as substitutes for already formed teams. There is no guarantee you'll be able to play if you fill out a solo duo application. The deadline for submission is December 31st at 11.59pm EST, although the earlier you submit, the easier it'll make my life. If you have any questions or just want to be part of the tournament community early, make sure to join the tournament Discord server which will be linked with everything else. You'll be required to join this anyway if you want to play. With all of that general introduction stuff out of the way, I'll go over the rules in detail here. Hello, hello, good morning. It is currently 3 in the morning. I know that for a lot of you this is probably your first time seeing my VTuber avatar. My eyes are staring directly into your soul. So yeah, here I have the rule set pulled up. We're gonna be going through this entire thing. It's basically five pages long. Everybody who signs up will be expected to read these all, but I will be going through literally everything right here, so if you watch this portion of the video then that'll be good enough. I also, before I start going through the rules, I want to mention that we have some merch for the tournament. So you can go to my merch website, link will be in the description, and you can pick up either the 
Freljord Fluff Tourney hoodie or the Freljord Fluff Tourney t-shirt. They come in both light blue and white. All right, let's go over these rules. Welcome to the first Freljord Fluff Tourney hosted by Psychopathic Poro. Compete with your friends or team up with strangers for a first place prize pool of $100 in this 3v3 team tournament. Okay, so I said some of this in the video, but just to reiterate, the tournament are on these days because those are the days that I think that people will be most likely to be free. Once you sign up, you'll be in the tournament Discord server. In the tournament Discord server, let me actually just pull this up. There is a channel here called Submit Ticket. You'll pretty much be using these tickets for everything. I go over them more in, more in detail in the rules, but essentially everybody will sign up on December 31st. Uh, I'll check all of the signups. I'll make the official bracket and schedule and then how that'll work is that i'll try to release that like either on january 1st second or third who knows maybe i'll be busy with new year's holiday and everything but i'll try to get it out as fast as possible you'll know exactly when your team will be playing their first match if the date and time don't work for your team you'll go into the discord server you'll go to submit a ticket you'll press open a ticket you'll say hey i was scheduled for i don't know january 11th at 3 p.m. but we can't do that can you change our time and as long as i know in advance like as long as everybody who the schedule doesn't match lets me know a few days before the tournament starts i can shuffle around the schedule of the bracket until i find an opening time slot that everybody can agree to and then hopefully the at least the first round of the tournament will go as smoothly as possible. Application for the teams can be found here, solo duos here, link to the tournament discord server can be found here. All right, so let's take a look at those. So this is the team application. Let me zoom in on some of this stuff. If you have a team, please sign up with a team. The solo duo application will not get priority. Essentially the way that this works is that I, I have the cap in my head of 64 teams. If less teams than that sign up, I'll figure out what I'm gonna make the format. But my general idea is that I'm going to accept the first 64 teams who sign up. Let's let's say that there are like 50 teams that sign up and then there's a bunch of solo duos. What I'll do is uh, I'll make teams out of the solo duo applications in order to like fill up the bracket format. And then after that, any leftover solos or duos will be given the opportunity to be put onto pre-established teams as substitutes. So, and, and there'll be more about that in the rules later. First, we've got the logo drawn by one of my mods. Very, very cool. Discord username of the team captain, Discord usernames of the two main players and any applicable substitutes. Remember, everybody has to join the Discord server. Team name, team logo. Uh, if you don't have a team logo, you can just add in a, a blank picture here and then we can deal with that later in-game name of your team captain in-game name of teammates one and two here on the team application you have the option to add two substitutes Th these can be anyone that, that you want um, if you want substitutes for your team then there will be a little checkbox here would you be willing to fill out your extra sub spots with random players who filled out solo duo applications if you select yes here, then you are eligible to receive random subs from anybody who fills out this application who wasn't able to get filled onto a team. Then this is just a thing, you have to just check all of these boxes to make sure that like you know all of the, all of the stuff. This, uh, again, I, I want it to be first come first serve. I don't, I, re I really don't think 64 teams will sign up if I'm being honest, but if there's a world where, where 64 teams do sign up, I want to go first by like first come first serve basis. So, so the teams who filled out their applications first will get priority. But on top of that, I also just added this question here because why not? If there's a team who signed up super early, but they're like very clearly joking or like not taking it seriously, I might not consider them over a team who like genuinely wants to play and stuff. So just have this here. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, you can leave it blank if you want. Solo application looks pretty similar, except it's a bit shorter. So Discord username, uh, Discord username of duo if applicable. Your in-game name, in-game name of your duo. Check the boxes. Why do you think you'd be a good fit? By signing up and participating in the tournament, you are acknowledging that you read and understand the rules in their entirety and that you can commit to the dates and time slots of selected games. If you have any questions or complaints, please refer to the mods and admins via the ticket system in the Discord server. Please do not DM mods with your questions. The ticket channel is hashtag submit ticket. So, so yeah, you can see channel submit ticket, the role, event staff, tournament organizer, base rules, chat and general behavior. So these are the rules that are that are mostly just like for the Discord server, the Twitch chat, 
um, in-game chat, all of that stuff. Any harassment or personal attacks on anywhere will result in a server mute, suspension, or ban depending on severity. The punishment may also include a team-wide ban from the tournament. Team names and player names must be appropriate. These names will be evaluated in the sign-up form and may play a factor in acceptance into the tournament. So basically don't name your team something really stupid. The cast will be running on a three minute delay. Do not spoil the result of the game in the server or Twitch chat until the stream has caught up. So how this works is that when you're spectating a tournament draft in League of Legends, the game actually like forces you to go on a three minute delay. So you guys will start and then I won't be able to jump into the game until three minutes after it starts, so the players don't actually have to worry about like getting stream sniped or anything. Uh, I'll be behind. What that means is that when the game actually ends, please don't go to Twitch chat and type in like, ah, GG, or like, ah, oh, that last fight was so close, or whatever. Like, like, don't type anything like that, because the stream is going to be three minutes behind. I don't want any spoilers for the end of games. Wait until the stream actually catches up and the game ends before you say anything about the game. Emotes, mastery flashes, dancing, laughing, taunting are allowed. All chat is allowed. Mean-spirited all chat is punishable on a case-by-case -case basis. Violations may result in automatic game loss. Okay, so basically this is just like common sense with the all chat thing. Just don't, don't be don't be stupid with all chat. If you, if you want to like taunt each other in all chat or like try to like rile each other up, that's like fine. Substitutions must be made before draft starts and team captains must communicate any subs they plan to use prior to this if a player who is not listed on the main roster for a team appears in draft captains should submit a ticket to report the issue the teams can have substitute players if a team wants to use one of their substitute players they have to tell the other captain that is going to happen and the other captain has to like be like okay yeah they're substitutes uh, me and the other event staff we're not super responsible for this it's between the two captains to know who the enemy team is going to be playing in the match if one of the captains thinks that the other captain is doing a foul play, they can open up a ticket and tell us what's going on, and then we'll figure it out. But for the most part, you guys as as the teams get control over this. That means if you if you show up to play your game and the enemy team has people on their team that you don't recognize, who like aren't on the team list, and you don't say anything about it and you play the game anyway, it is on you. So it, it is your responsibility to know that that you're playing against the people who you thought you were going to be playing against and it's also your responsibility to report it and if you don't report it i'm not going to punish the other team during tournament matches team members participating must be in one of the designated tournament voice calls in the discord server this is to ensure the teams are not receiving outside help during the game via coach or other third party so on the server you'll see that we have these community vcs but below that, we have Team Voice Chats, Team Blue, Team Red. When you join the server, you will not be able to see these. Uh, you won't be able to see them until I give you the captain or player role, and then you'll be able to see them. When you're playing your official matches, you must be in these VCs, because I don't want to run into an issue where there's a team who's like playing in a personal VC, and they're screen sharing to like some challenger player who's like coaching them and telling them what to do. So none of that. Game dates and time slots will be predetermined. It is expected that teams who signed up are able to commit to the time frame the tournaments will be occurring on. Game schedule will be announced at least 24 hours prior to the first match. If a team shows up late to their time slot, a penalty will be applied based on the number of minutes late by. Okay, so five minutes lost the first ban, 10 minutes late, loss of all bans, 15 minutes, immediate forfeit of match. If team one is, is eight minutes late, and team two is like, nah, that's chill, it's whatever. You can just play the match as normal, like full bans, no punishment. Like, it's cool. This is this punishment is is more of a suggestion. It's saying the captain can implement this if they want to. The 15 minute one, the immediate forfeit of match, that's required because we have to keep the tournament moving because I only have so many days to finish it if I'm gonna cast everything. The way that um, loss of bans work is that the two teams will communicate with each other champions that they have no intention of picking no matter what and then um those will just be banned instead all players must play on the account that is listed on the sign up application so no smurfs in the event that an account is not permitted to play account banned or bugged the player may submit a ticket to add a valid second account to use instead this ticket must be placed at least one hour prior to their team's match okay let's say that you were playing solo queue last night and you got really angry and you typed some mean things in all chat and your account got banned for two weeks and you have to play in the tournament tomorrow submit a ticket Open a ticket, be like, my account got banned, I have a second account, this is the IGN of the second account. Then we will communicate with the other captain and say, hey, this player got, uh, like, this player will be using this account instead of that account. You should be expecting to see this IGN tomorrow. 
and then that's the iGen that you'll be expected to show up with. All ranks are welcome in this tournament, unranked, iron to challenger. As this tournament has a prize pool, it'll be expected that anyone with a lower rank knows their chances of winning the tournament is significantly lower than a higher ranked team. Okay, so essentially the reason why, why this is written here is because I once played in, in another tournament. It was also a cash tournament. The winning team got like, I don't know, $50 or something. What happened was that there were a bunch of teams of people who were like iron, bronze, silver, and then there were a bunch of other teams of players who were like high diamond, master, and what ended up happening was was that obviously the, the diamond and master teams uh, won all of the early rounds against the silver teams, and then the silver teams were like, oh my gosh, this isn't fair, why do we have to play against people this good? It's like, listen, you're playing in a cash tournament. You're playing in a, in a competitive cash tournament. If you're going to sign up with a team of iron players, you have to go in knowing that you're not going to win the tournament, right? Like if, if you're going to, if you're going to sign up with a team like that, you're playing for fun, essentially. And then, so I don't want anybody to like be sore losers just because they lost to a team that was objectively better than them. All right, here we go. Tournament format and rules. This is the important stuff. Well, I mean, it's all the important stuff, but this is like the important, important stuff. Game format will be a 3v3 on Summoner's Rift. First to destroy one inhibitor will win the game. Any inhibitor can be destroyed. Each team must have exactly one player present in each of the three lanes prior to the two minute mark on the in-game time. Players may not start the game in any of the four jungle quadrants. This is really important. No funny business, please. When the game starts, one person in each lane on each team. Do not start in river. Do not like AFK run out to the five point locations that you're used to running out to in solo queue. Please do not like run out to your blue buff or your red buff or whatever. Run through your lanes, stay in your lanes until the two minute mark. If you happen to like see the um, opponent and you're like, wow, this is a really bad matchup. I want to swap lanes. You can do that, but you have to base and then run down the, you and your teammate have to both base and then run down the other lanes manually. Like you can't cut through river or anything like that. This is because I want to keep the, the spirit of the original tournament format alive which was the three separate 1v1s in the three lanes because I, I really ended up liking that idea and i just couldn't do it because the logistics didn't work out um it also makes sure that teams won't get any kind of like crazy unfair advantage at the start of the game i really don't want a game to be decided by just like three people running into a lane and getting a cheese first blood because a lot of these games will be best of one and the tournament will likely be single elimination and i want teams to all feel like they got a fair shot to actually win their games. Okay. After the two minute forced laning period, players may perform any actions on the map they would like. This includes free reign over any jungle camps or objectives and any roam slash ganks a team would want to attempt. So like if let's say you lock in rise mid and you push the lane at level three and you want to run bot and dive, go ahead. That's cool. If the five minute mark hits and the three of you want to group up and take a dragon, that's cool. If one of you on the team wants to take smite, and then at the two minute mark, you base and buy a jungle pet, and then you start clearing all of the jungle camps and you just become a jungler, that's cool. Just for the first two minutes, you have to be in lane. Players are not allowed to start a level one proxy. However, proxying after the two minute mark is allowed. So the reason why I'm banning level one proxies, one is because in order to start a level one proxy, you would most likely have to run through the jungle in some way, which I don't want. And then two, if you do manage to get off a level one proxy, it's really hard to stop because no jungler. The draft will be a 3v3 draft and a tournament draft custom lobby hosted by the event organizer, which is me. So I will make the draft lobby and then invite both captains. Side selection will be determined randomly through a coin toss and will be visible on the tournament bracket prior to the match. Okay, so this is something that I will do. When I make the bracket, the, the top team will be blue side and the bottom team will be red side. Unless we get to a stage in the tournament where I decide to make it best of threes, in which case, we'll decide who gets first side selection by a coin toss, and then after that, the losing team will will pick their side in the second game. The two team captains will be expected to be present in the tournament lobby at least five minutes prior to the scheduled start time. The full team will be expected to be in the lobby at the start time, and any time-based penalties will be applied in accordance to the schedule. Okay, so let's say that your match time is at noon. I'll make the tournament lobby probably at like 11.50. I'll invite both captains. They'll be expected to join by 11.55. The rest of their team will be expected to join by 12. Uh, at 12 o'clock, if everybody's ready, we'll press the start game button. If one of the teams isn't ready, the clock will start ticking. And then at 12.05, they'll lose one ban. At 12.10, they'll lose all their bans. And at 12.15, uh, they'll automatically take a loss. Drafts will take place in the in-game client, meaning any mistakes and misclicks a team makes will be permanent, so draft carefully. Okay, so this is another big thing. We will not be using 
ProDraft or Drafting.gg or like any of the external drafting tools, you will be drafting in-game, like, like on the in-game client, meaning that if you, uh, like for example, when we were in practice and we were first testing out the bans, it still showed up visually that we had five bans, but you only get three. So like I was banning champions and then I was like, oh, I'm going to make my fourth ban Warwick. And then I accidentally locked in Warwick because I was first picking. Like, if you do that in the actual game, you're stuck with Warwick. You have to play Warwick. Like, it's what, like, you just, any mistakes that you make, you just have to roll with it. We're not going to remake draft for a mistake. In-game pauses will be allowed, but should not be abused. If a team needs to pause the game for any reason, uh, investigating a potential bug, someone needs to leave for five minutes, someone got disconnected by accident, they can do so by having any team member type slash pause into the in-game chat. This will pause the game for all players involved. Each team is allowed up to 10 minutes of reasonable pause time per game. If a game is paused by one team for over 10 minutes for any reason, the team will receive an automatic game loss. This means that, that if you have uh, Jimmy on the team and Jimmy says, hey, I really have to go to the bathroom, and then he goes to the bathroom for 11 minutes, your team loses. If a team is pausing excessively in such a way that damages competitive integrity, that team will receive a warning or a game loss on a case-by-case -case basis. So what that means is that even though you get 10 minutes of pauses, Let's say that you're like pausing on and off over and over again 50 times in the game. It doesn't matter whether your pause time adds up to 10 minutes or not. At a certain point, we'll just be like, you are intentionally being disruptive with your pauses, so we're going to ban you. Captains will fill out their roster on their team application. They will fill out three players, including themselves, to serve as their main roster. This is the roster that all teams and event organizers should expect to see in tournament matches. If a player on the main roster cannot make the scheduled match time, they must submit a ticket to notify the event organizers of a player substitution at least 10 minutes prior to the start of the draft. If you're going to have an issue with your roster, you have to submit a ticket, tell event staff, uh, so that way both captains are in the know about what's going on. Because again, both captains need to know exactly who on the enemy team is playing before the match starts. There will be two slots for each team to add a substitute player, optional, on the application. If you have only one or no subs on your application, there will be an additional question that asks if your team is willing to take on random substitutes who filled out their own solo or duo application. Teams that are willing to accept random substitutes will be notified of their substitutes once the registration period ends. So again, here on the team app, would you be willing to fill out your extra sub spots with random players who filled out solo duo applications? If you press yes, people who filled out this application will be eligible to be subs on your team. And we'll let you know who those are, like, like a week in advance before the tournament starts. Some players who cannot find a team of three may wish to submit an application anyway. These players will be sorted into random teams and will be allowed to participate. Any leftover players after this will be, give, will be given the option to be added to a substitute list on another registered team. So again, the Solo Duo app, the point is to make remaining teams that would fill out however many slots we need in the bracket. And then after that, the remaining players will be sorted into random teams. Okay, so for example, let's say that uh, 27 teams sign up the best uh, bracket format to use for 27 teams is a 32 team bracket. So we will make five more teams out of everybody in the Solo Duo app, uh, most likely first come first serve, then everybody left over in the Solo Duo app after we make five more teams to fill out our 32 teams. Everybody left over will be used as, as subs spread out across all of the teams who, who checked yes for this question. Roster changes. If for any reason a team uh, needs to drop or replace someone on their roster, they may do so by opening a ticket in the Discord server at least 48 hours prior to the start of the tournament. Changes must be approved by a tournament organizer. If a replacement is not reported in time, that team will receive an automatic game loss. No exception will be made for player illness or urgent issues, as these are the risks that come with signing up with no substitutes. Pretty self-explanatory. All name changes must be appropriate and must be communicated to tournament organizers via a Discord ticket at least one hour prior to any official match played involving that team. If a name change is not communicated properly before the game starts, that team will lose all of their bans for that game. So basically, uh, if you have like a, a, a Discord girlfriend or something and you guys are matching names in game and then you break up before the tournament starts and then you change your name to something else you have to tell us that you changed your name you have to open a ticket and tell us that you changed your name so that way we know the correct account name to communicate to the other captains so that way they can scout you properly finally we've got streaming the official link to the tournament stream will be twitch tv slash psychopathic poro players are allowed to stream their own games players should add at least three minutes of stream delay to ensure no unfair advantages Map covers are also encouraged. The onus is on the streamer to protect their stream, uh, their team against stream sniping. So you're allowed to stream your own game. 
However, you have to understand that if you're streaming your own game, you are increasing the risk that your team will be sniped, and that will be your own responsibility to deal with. The whole entire add three minutes of stream delay and have a map cover, those are recommendations. If you choose not to do either, if you want to stream in real time with no map cover, that's fine. But you can't complain if the enemy team is like staring at your stream and, and knows where you are and, and everything like that. All right, and that is all the rules. So if everybody, if you've read all of the rules, then feel free to fill out an application, join the Discord server, say hi. Uh, we'll be running some, some test matches in between now and when the tournament starts on and off. So if you ever see me live, uh, come say hi there. Maybe we'll be running custom 3v3s. You can join in for that. Those are usually first come, first serve. Although if somebody hasn't played in one yet, then we kind of just like uh, let you in and give you a spot. So uh, yeah, that's that. Thank you.